Hey everybody, Hope Savara here. Welcome to the show. I am super excited because we have a very special guest tonight. Her name is Karen Urbanic. She is a holistic health educator. She is actually the founder of Holistic Health Educators and the creator of the Total Nutrition Counselor Program. She is known worldwide as a leader in health. That's right, your health and really changing people's lives one cell at a time. She is very passionate about how the body works, how the body really works, how to heal the body and how to live a healthy, natural life. She's also traveling the United States currently in an RV. Yes, you heard her. Uh, her name is Zuzu on wheels, Karen Urbana. Karen, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Help. <laughs> I am so excited to have you on. And the reason why I wanted you as one of my first guests was because one, you're one of the smartest people that I know, uh, but two, two, your, your way of explaining how the human body works is really what changed my life personally, probably 15 plus years ago, your ability to break things down and just make it I call it fifth grade level because I think many of us don't understand our health anyways. And I wanted to have you on because the show focuses on the body aspect of mind, body, and spirit. And I'd love to open up this conversation right away with one, Karen, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got here today. And two, what does health mean to you? Like, how about we start there? Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you again for having me on. There's nothing in the world I like talking about more than the human body. I mean, I have a lot of grandkids and I still would rather talk about the human body because I'm so excited about it. Right. And um, don't tell my grandkids, but anyhow, because I'm just so passionate. Like I love your guts, you know, like literally. So in my art, so all of you, you'll see me on the road because you cannot miss my RV. It's wrapped in chromosomes and DNA and, and cells. And, and it says, we love your guts on it and love yourself, you know, because everything comes down to the sell and and for you to to be healthy enough to love your grandkids and go on vacations and and exercise and feel great and eat wonderful food like you need us your cells to go along with it right like those little cells make up your whole body and so um my background pretty simple i um i grew up in a rural very small little city in wisconsin uh called wind lake and i had epilepsy so i would have seizures i'd ring, ring a bell and then have a seizure that was really exciting on dates and so like i grew up with epilepsy and when i got married and got pregnant for the first time i'm like wait i don't want these medications in my bloodstream when i'm making a baby and so i took myself off of all of my medications and i did it over a period of time but i didn't just go off medication hope i found what other components, nutritional components were needed to close the synapse so I wouldn't have these seizures, right? So my dendrites were working properly, so my nervous system was working. Um, now that I know everything, I'm well, really what I'm talking about, because back then I was 20 or 21, you know, now is what I do for a profession. I was GABA deficient. Every single person on the planet who has seizures or epilepsy, I firmly believe is GABA deficient. And so that's what I love. So I just started learning about the human body at that point, became a holistic healthcare practitioner, started teaching classes, open health health food stores, wellness centers, cafes, organic cafes. It's just been a truly an incredible joy to be alive and to be working with so many people. Um, so that's the background. As far as what does health mean to you? Health means, health means being able to look at life and be full of joy, no matter what is going on around you. That's health. Like, so health is having a body that is not, you know, is, you know what, this is, I used to say, I used to say this all the time when I, when I was working with, um, people who were uh, alcoholics or uh, addicted to drugs, one thing I would teach them was to fast. And I taught them how to fast because they're like, what do you mean fast? I, I, I want you to go without food and water for two you hours. You don't mean just going I, fast, like going fast in life? <laughs> no, yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah, that too. But, um, but to fast because I taught them, I was teaching them that their body should be in control I mean, their spirit should be in control of their body and not their body in control of their spirit. Now that's a big thing, everybody. So wrap your head around that. Like, do you wake up in the morning and you need to have your coffee and you need your medication and you need this, you need this, then your body is in control of your spirit. That's backwards, honey. And my book health is when your spirit is in control of your body and you feel everything. You feel all the emotions because you're not on medications for depression or for anything else. And don't worry if you are, 
we can help you with that. Like there's hope, like, like don't, don't be thinking you need to turn this off because this is to be inspiring, not to be uh, anything, but, and so that to me, health is when the spirit is in charge and very aware of everything going on inside the body. Uh, you can feel your blood rushing through your veins. You can, you can feel excitement. You can feel pain. You can feel when you get stung by something, you can feel what your food is doing to your body. You're you present, your right? Blood pressure. Yeah, you can feel your blood pressure increasing if you eat something that wasn't good. And I bet most of you can do that who are listening, you just haven't. And so when you start putting the spirit in control, man, you're going to wake up and go, my body is amazing. You know, this is like the best thing I have on earth. And it is no matter what state you're in, it's the number one thing to become in tune with. So maybe the definition of health by Karen Zuzu here is, is feeling, feeling it all like, your mm -hmm. spirit's in control and you feel it alive inside of you and you can feel what's going on in your body. You well, know, I, th I love that, Karen, because I think for many people, whether you're a driver or not- You just damn well love yourself. <laughs> we're, we're just like rushing through life. And, and this idea of health is almost like this outside thing. Like we have to attain it. And what you're saying is it's like, it's within you tap into it. And I think that that's such a different perspective for so many of us. It's like, oh, I have to go to the doctor to get my health. Oh, I have to go to the gym to get my health. And what you're suggesting is no, just like tap into it because it's there, it's available to you. You're just not choosing to listen to it. You're not choosing to tune into it. Uh, and you said something that really provoked me and you were talking about the spirit is in control of your body. And I'm a recovering addict. And that really sp speaks to me because part of my recovery journey was getting in touch with myself and feeling and like paying more attention to what was going on and how things made me comfortable or uncomfortable. And that was a really big part of my health. But I want to also touch a little bit on you talked about cells and, you know, I, I, I took high school biology and high school anatomy, and I don't really remember much of it. Uh, but I remember that word cell, but I don't think I ever really fully understood what cells do in the body and what cells are. Can you explain that? Like in a fifth grade level to listeners? You betcha. Cells are awesome. So actually, when you're looking at somebody, you're looking at a bunch of cells. You're looking at 50 to trillion to 70 trillion cells. 70 so, trillion? Yeah. 50 wow. to 70 trillion cells make up every human being, uh, except for the babies are a little smaller. But, um, but yeah, and these cells are growing and dividing, growing and dividing, growing and dividing. And every cell grows and divides at a different rate. Some are growing and dividing, and you're going to make billions of them in the next 20 minutes that you're hearing this. Um, and some of them are going to take your lifetime, right? So some cells you have your entire life. And so because cells are growing and dividing, that's amazing because that means one awesome thing. You aren't going to be the same in a month or in six months or in seven years, right? And so as you change the cell environment, you change the outcome of your life. And so my book, Live With Energy, it is all about how a cell, what's called cell context, right? Like how do you change the context of your cells so you have one healthy cell growing and dividing into two healthy cells and you eliminate the sick cells that are growing and dividing into two sick cells. And so when you get more healthy cells than sick cells, you're, you're, you're swaying the pendulum, right? And you're turning into something that's healthier. So your cells actually they all do something different. So your toenail cells are going to do something different than your, you know, your, your hamstring cells or your heart cells, right? Any muscle cell is different than the nervous cell, than a nerve cell. And so because they're all different, they all require different food because they do something different. So a heart cell that has a lot of mitochondria, like in the heart and the muscle, because your muscles need a lot of energy. So you might have a lot more mitochondria because that mitochondria is a tiny little organ inside of the cell. You actually have quite a few organs inside of the cell and they're called organelles. So all of your cells breathe, all of your cells um, detox, all of your cells create energy, everything that you do, your, your entire your cells do even every single cell has a structure like an actual physical structure like you have bones and so it's really fascinating um and by the way your all your listeners um can access 
our free cell talk series um, with the link that you have. So go ahead, listeners, and you can get two hours of how cells function. And you're going to laugh the whole time because Amy and I did it and we did, a, we had a lot of fun with it, but anyhow. And so the cell context is everything. When you change your cell context, you change your life. So, so if you, can I ask a question, Karen? So when someone's talks about like at a cellular level, cause I feel like a lot of advertisements in the health world oh, yeah. um, talk about the cellular level, but yeah. I, I mean, ignorantly, you know, my past, my past version of myself, I just would read that stuff and be like, Oh, cellular level. Okay, cool. But like, what, what does that mean? Like cellular yeah, level, like question. feed your cells at a cellular level, or you get healthy at a cellular level or, you know, nutrition at a cellular level. What does yeah. that mean when somebody reads well, that? Just, just so everyone knows those words are very misleading. It's like saying all natural, every single thing on the mm. planet is natural mm. and every single thing is cellular. Everything Eat, look, eating bark is like, like everything, which I actually do when it comes to certain medicinal mushrooms, but anyhow, but like everything is cellular because everything goes into, not into the cell, but around the cell. So you have two types of fluid. You have interstitial fluid. Uh, you know, so you have this, you have fluid inside of the cell, intercellular fluid, and then you have this fluid, which is the cells float in. And so you have these, the fluid that the cells are floating in the fluid that is inside of the cell and the, the fluid inside of the cell is going to be calling for stuff like, Hey, your, your cell might need more leptin. Your cell might need more vitamin A or vitamin E or vitamin K, or it might need more iron or sulfur. Right. And so your cellular receptor sites are these tiny little antennas. And believe it or not, you have like hundreds of thousands of tiny little antennas sticking out of every single cell. So now you can be like, wow, blown away. Right. And those cells are communicating to the fluid outside of the cell. Hey, I need boron. Hey, I need zinc. Hey, I need magnesium. And so then it comes into the cell. Now there's many ways to transport that's all covered in the videos. However, when you hear something at a cellular level, mostly it's just, it's just a mimic, a gimmick to make you think it's just really incredible. Now here's the ticker though. Everything is at a cell level. Every emotion you have affects your cell. Everything affects the cells. Everything you eat, everything you drink, everything you put on your skin, everything you breathe, everything is a cellular level experience. You know Here's what that makes me think about, Karen? It makes me think about, me. Um, I read a, a book once and watched some videos they were talking about like water and how like you talk really negative to water and like you like hate on it and yeah, you know, yeah, like are really yeah. mean to it and it like starts to die. But if you like talk great to it and are like positive with it and put it in sunlight, like it's like the perfect pH and they've done those yeah. studies with plants too. Like you go yeah. in and talk positively to your plants and you love on them and water them and tell them they're beautiful and they grow and they grow and they grow. And then you tell them they're horrible and ugly and dumb and you know not 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 a good thing and they start dying and yeah. isn't the same yep. true for our bodies because you're talking <laughs> about the spirit yeah. is in control of your body now you're talking yeah. about this idea of the cellular level how like this fluid around the cells is telling the cell like it's like the gatekeeper like okay i'll let you in because the cell cell needs this like your body's doing this all on its own so what we say to ourselves on a cellular level, we're going to use that word. We're going to be like cool and trendy, right? Um, on a cellular level is really dictating your health, right? So you can go to the doctor and be like, oh, I need this medication or, oh, I have to lose weight or I haven't got exercise. But if internally you're still saying I'm dumb, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm stupid. I'll never do this. I'm too old. Like, yeah. how is that affecting your cells? Yeah. Yep, exactly. That, and that's amen. And so knowing everything goes into the cell, you gotta be more careful what you're putting in your mouth, you know, and what you're listening to and what's going on in your skin. Like you no longer go buy the $3 lotion that smells like petunias because that's just caustic. You don't drink or eat vegetable oil. You, you have to be a little bit more careful because everything you eat, drink or put on your skin or think it's not all gonna affect the cell. Um, okay, I have, I have a question now, for you too. So you talked you about cells, um, like regenerating and dividing. And so, so unhealthy cells also multiply and divide. And so do healthy cells. They multiply and divide. So when somebody yep. gets sick and let's say someone's chronically sick and they're just like not getting better, does that mean that their unhealthy cells or their sick cells are the ones that are rapidly multiplying and dividing? How do you turn that? Like, how do you flip that switch to go from unhealthy cells multiplying and dividing to healthy yeah. cells multiplying and dividing? Like, like, give me like the basic 411 here. You betcha. Fantastic. That's exactly what happens. The number one thing is going to be stress. 
number one thing that causes illness is stress. Every single cancer mm. client, boom, we go right back to what's causing all of this. And Isn't the same like 90% of all, of all dis-ease is stress yeah, related, stress, right? Yeah, like something related. like that. And then alkalize the body. So get off of the standard American diet. Get Okay, hold on, hold on. You got to tell people what does alkaline mean? I know what it means, oh, but um, I, most people I don't think really know what that means. What does that mean? Sure. No, so great question. So everything you eat is going to, or drink is going to go into the body and then it's going to change into an alkaline. It's going to create an alkaline or an acidic state in the body. So like, it's like meat. You can test the pH of meat outside of the body, but then when you chew it and you put it into the body, it becomes acidic. Um, and that's because it mixes are, with your gastric juices, right? Like once it's yeah, in your it's stomach well, and it's like mixing with the juices in there, like it changes it, right? Well, not really. And it's, it's, it's a good way to think of it because the juices are breaking it down. But what happens with, because otherwise everything would be acidic if it all mixed with our hydrochloric acid and lettuce is definitely not acidic and kale is definitely not acidic, right? And so certain foods are just alkaline through and through. Certain foods react with the chemicals that are in the body that break it down and it becomes acidic. So if got you it. look at, and I've got a, a free pH chart and um, I, it's, it's, a, it's a free ebook called Fueling for Life. And um, we can share that as well with your clients. And so that explains the pH, the potential of hydrogen and how to alkalize the body and get it away from an acidic body. So my cancer clients, right, you know, right off the bat, they're on an alkaline journey, right? Boom, they just remove everything that's acidic in their life because cancer cells can't grow in a high alkaline environment at can all. You give me, you can you body. give me like three <laughs> examples of alkaline food and three examples of acidic food? Yeah. I mean, alkalizing food, almost every single herb is alkalizing. Your, all your greens are alkalizing. So collards and lettuces and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, mo almost most vegetables are alkalizing. The acidic food is dairy, meat, um, grain that's been processed uh, is very, because uh, sugars are, are acidic. Um, but there's some like, was, like blueberries are acidic. How, so you, in the ideal body, you'll have 20% acidic and then 80% alkaline. So I'm a raw foodist. I cook very little food. Um, I'll cook quinoa or some buckwheat or some millet, you know, I'll, um, and cauliflower and some vegetables once in a while. But I do most, most of my food is actually alive. It's living because that's just how I feel most. That's how I feel best, right? And so blueberries are probably the 20%. I eat so many blueberries in a day. It is really quite funny. But I, I other, love blueberries other, too. Other, yeah, there's other fruits and vegetables that are acidic and that's all on my charts that will help. I mean, that are, uh, that are and they're still very healthy for you but having that switching to the 80 percent alkaline is a huge shift for people and it becomes all it really is hope is you're becoming more plant-based because mm. the earth is full what what does ph mean potential of hydrogen where do you get hydrogen from the ground from minerals right it's it's basically the potential of minerals is what it should be called in the body, right? Because the more fruits and vegetables you eat and nuts and seeds and beans, you're, you're low. And I mean, you're loaded with all these minerals that are coming out of the, out of the ground and those minerals, every single mineral sparks life. And so it sounds it like what you're, life. what you're saying is alkaline foods are things that are alive, like alkaline alive <laughs> and acidic foods tend to be dead or fake, let's call it. So like potato chips, um, yeah. a bun, um, yes, you yes, know, cookies, yes. candy, those kinds of things. Like those are acidic um, and like basically yep. dead food. Well, they so, offer no hydrogen. Okay, no hydrogen. no hydrogen, awesome. Hydrogen. So so it really exactly. is, you are what you eat, right? You and are 100% what you eat, yes. So, yeah, so you I wanna recap before you go any farther. So stress, Stress yep. creates dis-ease, okay? Uh -huh. And stress also makes the body more acidic, right? And I, I, oh, feel, yeah. I feel like that's, uh, that is yep. something I do know. <laughs> amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Yep, yep, yep. So we want an alkaline body. We want to reduce stress. Like how else can we, you know, have healthy cells multiply in our body versus sick cells? Well, you have to move them. So a lot of cells get very stuck together, right? They mm. all just get like stuck together, glued together because people don't exercise. They don't breathe. They don't move. So like jiggling, get a get a vibrating plate that you stand on, go for a walk every morning, get out and jump, do jumping jacks, do yoga, do Tai Chi, do something, right? Moving the body, certain essential oils you can put on and boom, it causes the cells to separate and, and create life again. It's like moving the body is huge. You cannot get well sitting on a couch. I mean, 
That's not true. Like there are some cases where someone is really good at visualization and they'll sit on that couch and they'll visualize a very, very, very healthy body. And over months they can do that. That's very strict medic medic meditation is required for that but 99 percent of the of the population is not going to get well sitting on a couch or watching a tv oh my god turn off that tv pardon my language but turn off the tv get away from sitcoms anything with a laughing track oh my gosh it's fake hello you've all been raised on fakeness because every laugh track i was in radio and tv broadcasting all the laugh tracks are fake they're just a, an audience that's that's recorded and then it's changed and it's shifted like I raised my kids, they couldn't watch anything with a laugh track. How, how abusive of a mother was I, right? I'm like, no, because it's not real. You know, it's just a fake show and it's, it's, it's not alive. Okay. So, so that's just, I'm just saying, get rid of the crap that's going to get you depressed or addicted. And people are addicted to far more than just a subs. You might, you might have had an addiction hope, but I'm telling you, you're talking to a vast majority of people when you present that are addicted to their TV or their social media. And hello, it's fun. It's easy. It's easy to be checking Instagram and seeing what your friends are all doing, but we'd have to also step back a little bit and think, Hey, is this good for myself? You know? Mm -hmm. So, so stress, alkaline, uh, drinking water also will help alkaline the body. If I, if I am oh, yeah. uh, correct and uh, yeah. moving the body, I mean, this is definitely my area as far as movement goes. And I mean, yes. move it or lose it and, and you move your body, everything moves. I mean, digestive system, so many drivers, you know, struggle with things like constipation. Um, and there's a lot of factors that go into that, but just getting up and moving, what Karen's trying to say is, you know, if you're choosing to sit down and, and watch TV, you know, okay, fine, watch your show, but like, why don't you go for a walk and watch your show? Um, or if you want to listen to this podcast, why don't you like walk and, and listen to the podcast or talk to your mom on FaceTime and like go to the park? Um, there, there's lots of options um, I that you can you know, move forward and get those cells moving. And I want to go back to this idea of these healthy cells multiplying, because this is not a conversation we hear a lot when we talk about the human body. It's like, get rid of the disease, get rid of the disease, get rid of the disease. You have to like zap it out of your body. But what you're <laughs> suggesting is that, well, the best way to get the unhealthy cells to stop multiplying is to get healthy cells to multiply. And yep. that's typically not the conversation when somebody is sick, it's no. get rid of the sick cells. So yep. what else can we do if we're sick? Or maybe we don't even know that we're sick, um, but what else can we do to get those healthy cells to multiply quickly? My gosh, well, you pretty much, we nailed the most, most important things right on the head is going to be nutrition, getting as many minerals into the body as possible. Minerals only come from plants. And so the minerals are in the ground. If you look outside, look at the earth, it's loaded with minerals. That's how all your alfalfa is growing. And all the animals that eat the alfalfa are getting all the minerals, right? It's how everything grows. All your trees, the trees, their roots are going into the ground, grabbing minerals, and then they create apples and oranges and pecans and whatever, right? So like everything is minerals. And so fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, those are loaded with minerals. And so just changing that. So nutrient density is huge exercise, obviously, and you're the pro at that. Um, and by the way, for the drivers who are listening, I picked, so I live in an RV, right? And so I picked up a Life Pro, L-I-F-E-P-R-O. It is a $200 unit or maybe 200 50 or something like that. It's a whole body vibration unit that you just stand on. It doesn't, it's not the big, huge ones that, you, you know, are thousands of dollars that are, you know, you stand and you hold on to something. It literally just is, it's like two feet, not even 18 inches by maybe two and a half feet. So you, I just plucked it right outside my, in my RV. So I can use that when I don't get out for a walk in the day. So to move the body doing that and then doing some yoga, that can, that's sometimes all I do in the mornings before I hit the road. So you know, moving the body, obviously the water, because the water helps you detox. And I know people who drive a lot are, are concerned about drinking the water, but your body will get very used to it. When you start drinking water, a lot more water, maybe the first two or three weeks will be weird. Like you'll be urinating all the time, but then you're going to get into a schedule where you're just, you're just going to the bathroom when you stop and get gas, you know? So, um, just, some thoughts on that, but though, that's the easiest thing to create healthy cells is to give the cells what they need in the first place. Most people are sick because they're not eating what the cell needs. If your cell needs um, glutamic acid, if your cell needs lysine, if your cell needs tryptophan, those are amino acids, and you're not eating the food with those amino acids in them, 
then your cell can never do what it was designed to do. Um, when I do testing on people, sometimes I'll do their amino acid profile and boom, they'll be like low in five amino acids and three of them are the crucial ones for the nervous system. And they're wondering why they are having all these nervous system disorders. I'm like, well, <laughs> here's the, so the number one. I feel issue. like what you're trying to say right now is, and I feel like this is something that maybe, you know, needs to be a higher level conversation, you know, not just between you and I, but I think just in general in our society is that what you're talking about is what's causing the problem not mm -hmm. necessarily how to get rid of the symptoms. And yeah. it seems to me like this idea of feeding ourselves on a cellular level is really about like, what do these cells need to survive? What do these cells need, need to thrive is probably the better word. And minerals, these, these micronutrients that we need, this is like trying to build your house people and putting brick together and putting up boards, but never pounding nails in and never using mortar, never using like right. cement in between yep. the bricks. Like the house will never withstand the elements of life. If you don't use these micronutrients, these, these little connectors, these little bottom feeder, you know, essentials, um, the house is never going to stand upright and it might look okay for a while. You might be able to get to your thirties or forties or fifties, or maybe even sixties. And I hear this a lot, um, from people it's like, Oh, I'm healthy. I'm just fine. And it's like, you might be, you might be, your body yeah, right, might yeah, also might be, be working right. in overdrive right now. It might just be like, you know, I, I always call it like the, the natural alarm system. We all have this naturally built alarm system in our body where our body tells you something's wrong. Something's wrong. Hey, that pain that keeps coming back. That's not random. Hey, that stomach ache, like that's that there's a reason for that. And I feel like so many of us have perfected the art of not listening until it's too late. And so Karen, for those of the people that are out there listening and they feel like maybe their health is not as good as it should be for whatever reason, like, you know, let's not dwell on that. If anybody mm -hmm. could do something today, you know, it, what is it like, what is like one thing where it's like, oh, please, please, please do this. Like, do you have like one, I'm, I know we drink about water, stress, movement, um, minerals, like what is something that they should like definitely do? Okay. Are you ready for this one? Cause I know, I'm ready. I know the answer. Hit me. And I, and I want to thank you for that. Um, it's going to be forgive. Mm. Everyone has to forgive someone. There's someone in your life that you're listening to me right now that you have not forgiven that has terribly hurt you or offended you and it is making you sick i can guarantee it is making you sick and that's the number one thing that people need to do is forgive um my favorite word and all of my children know it because i grew up is allow a l l o w allow people to be who they are. Yes, mm -hmm. they might offend you. Yes, they might block you out of their life because you have a different belief than they do. They, you have to allow them to be who they are, even though they hurt you and they say things that have offended you. Your body is going to dwell on those people you have not forgiven, those people who have offended you, those people who have caused you harm, those people who have stolen your money, those people who have stolen your life, those people who said one thing and did another. Those people are, you are allowing them to make you sick because you haven't allowed them to just be who they are. That's who they are. So you don't play with them anymore. Now you play with more new friends. You come to Hope's show every day, every Monday. <laughs> you do things that bring you joy and you have to separate yourself. Even if it's your closest family members, you have to take care of yourself. One of my dear friends had reoccurring cancer, reoccurring cancer, reoccurring cancer. And she finally said, she said her husband came to her and said, it's me. I know I'm causing your cancer. And he left. Like literally, <laughs> He saw it, he knew it, but they were in a relationship where you're married forever, you know, and what are you going to do? And she's like, and she's never been better. So like these things happen. So forgiveness is the first step. I don't care. Drink some water, eat a cucumber. Those are amazing. By the way, cucumbers are very amazing, but like you can do all those little things. I have seen people I have met with, this is what I do for a living. I have met with people who are athletes who eat incredible and they have cancer and they have other chronic mm -hmm. disease because they can't let go. I'm so they glad you said that, Karen, because I feel like that's also 
um, you know, an image or a stigma that's out there where it's like, you know, these people that are like living this best life, eating all these perfect foods, investing in the most fanciest of supplements and vitamins, and they're still sick and they're still unhealthy or they look like hell. And it's like, why, which then makes people think, natural health doesn't work, which is so funny because, because that's like saying, you know, real food doesn't do anything, which I, again, another conversation, another day, but I love that you brought this up because you are what you eat, but you also are what you think and you are what you feel. And as much as we want to separate, you know, the spirit and the mind from the physical body, what you're suggesting, and I'm a hundred percent, you know, agree with you is that this is all intertwined. It's impossible to pull the body apart. I talk about this in movement all the time. Stop telling people to isolate their bicep. It is virtually impossible unless you're a cadaver to just let the, the bicep only be the muscle that contracts. Like whoever keeps telling you that is absolutely an insane person. Like it yep. is impossible. Or it's like saying the colon is the only thing working when you're having a bowel movement. Like it is so right, not, right, right, uh, right. And that is not possible. But this idea of forgiving I, I mean, it, it seems simpler than it is. And I've gone through this process before um, many times and I'm there right now with a family member and this idea of allowing, you said something really profound, allowing them to be themselves and forgiving them for for what it is they did to you because they might not even know it. And I, I listened to a podcast a while back and uh, I think it was a Brene Brown and, and she was talking about how forgiveness is misunderstood because many people think when I forgive somebody, I I'm okay with them. And forgiveness is actually more for yourself. Forgiveness is more about you denying access to them and letting them go. Like you're not holding them hostage in your life anymore because you're the only one that's suffering when you're not forgiving. And the fact that you brought this up, especially when it comes to alkalizing the body and cells on a cellular level, getting healthy cells to multiply, When you don't forgive, when you hold on to that anger, that resentment, that frustration, you're the only one on a cellular level that's being punished, right? That's right. That's right. You're the only one. It is affecting your health. I love this, Karen. And so I guess one last thing here before we let you go. Um, What is it that I'd love to know in your life right now, what are you doing? What's like the best thing, the number one thing you're doing and focusing on your personal health? I would just love for you to share that with the listeners. (sighs) Well, I'm making sure that I sweat every day. That's a big thing in my life. So I, and, and it's interesting because I'm in my RV. So I don't, I have a whole little wellness room. You know, I own hyperbaric chamber and a sauna and all these on my Peloton bike and like all my stuff. Right. And I don't have that with me. So I'm walking every day. I'm riding a bike. I'm doing something to make sure that I'm sweating and I'm moving my body. And I do that for two things. I'm doing that just for my cells. So my cells can detoxify and I can absorb better throughout the day. Um, but then I also am doing it for emotions. I've had to go through some really wild emotions that I never in my, I never in all my life would have thought I'd be where I'm at when I'm 54, uh, that, that I am right now. And I'm totally okay with this, but I, I am having to deal with some emotions. And I really find that, um, you know, somatic therapy, like vocalizing and getting things out when you're running or you're jogging or you're off, you know, that really is helpful, but it's also you get to be in nature. You get to see the, and even when I was in the house and I would be like riding my bike, I would have a documentary on. I watched every documentary because I love nature, love the world. And some of them I absolutely do not agree with, but I love the visuals, you know, it's like, who cares? You know, like I just love learning. And I find that when I'm exercising and I'm sweating, when I'm walking, if I'm talking with a friend or if I'm just, you know, self-expression, you're just able to forgive so much easier and allow and move forward. And that's, I'm not going to get sick because of someone else's actions. I'm refusing Mm. that. I am refusing to allow my body and my cells and my beautiful little body to become sick because I can't forgive somebody else and allow them to be who they are and make their own choices. That's my responsibility. It's not them causing me to be sick. We let ourselves get sick when we don't do it. So that's what I do. So I make sure I sweat every single day because if I'm sweating, I know that I'm exercising, I'm moving, I'm thinking, I'm speaking out loud, I'm grunting, I'm whatever I'm doing, and that is getting the junk out of my body. So I have room for all the great stuff that I put in every day. Wow. That was fantastic. I want to thank you so much, Karen, for being on the show today, for sharing how we can get healthy and love ourselves. That's C-E-L-L-F, self. Um, Karen, where can people find more about you? 
um, that you can find me at holistichealtheducators.com. Um, and then they can definitely follow me on Zuzu on Wheels. Um, I know I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Rumble, and something else. Um, but my, I have an IT person who posts everything. She's amazing. But anyhow, I do daily um, videos. There's always videos. Uh, awesome. um, and I'm in most of them. Some of them are just interviews I've done with different doctors as I travel around the country, um, where we have this 90 seconds to, or 60 seconds to health, uh, where we just cover something in 60 seconds or a minute and a half. So we have a lot of information that's coming out. Uh, and that's out right now. So just you can find me anywhere. And then you can watch my RV. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Karen, for being on the show. Listeners, we'll be back in just a second with a wrap up of today's episode. And we're back, listeners. I hope you enjoyed uh, Karen Urbanic or Zuzu, as uh, many call her. And lots to think about here on the show today. And I want to do a little bit of recap and give you some of my own personal insights from what Karen was talking about today. Now, if you think I talk fast, uh, you probably figured out really quick that she talks even faster than I do. So lots to take in there. But 70 trillion cells. Can you even like wrap your head around that right now? Our body is made up of 70 trillion cells. And uh, when I was younger, you know, you have such a one dimensional perspective on life and health. So it can be challenging sometimes to really be able to wrap your head around the fact that like our body is really complex. Our body is really um, multidimensional. And 70 trillion cells that are constantly multiplying and dividing, like wrap your head around that for a second, which makes us see or understand or come to this idea that, you know, it's not a once and done people like it, it just because you have something going on in your body does not mean it's forever. Now, if you have a genetic break, that's one thing. Um, but you can also repair that genetic break with the right nutrients that you're lacking. Um, but when it comes to our 70 trillion cells and you're dealing with a lot of dis-ease, well, ask yourself how much like fake artificial negative stuff are you surrounding yourself with? Are you ingesting? Probably more than you should be. And uh, it's one of the last things Karen said that really stuck with me. And, and I, I'm going to reinterpret it here. I'm going to say it in my words. We choose what we put into our bodies. We choose what we put into our bodies. We choose what we surround our bodies with. Now you might be like, well, that's not totally true because I have to be in this truck all the time, or I, you know, am with my spouse and they're really negative. Well, no, you're still choosing that. The alternative choice might be difficult. It might be hard to say, I have to part ways with you because you're toxic to me. There are some people in our lives that are toxic and they're making us sick. Um, but also we can choose our environment. Maybe you're going to stay a driver, but you can choose to upgrade your environment inside the cab of your truck, right? You can choose it. It might be a hard choice, you can choose to drink more water. It might not be the easiest choice, but you can choose it. You can choose to no longer watch, you know, the news. It might be a hard choice, but you can choose to do it. You can choose to go for a walk, even though you're tired. It might be a hard one, but you can choose it. And so we choose every single day how to feed those 70 trillion cells. Every single day, we make a choice on how it is we want those 70 trillion cells to multiply and divide. Do we want the, the unhealthy ones, the sick ones to multiply and divide? Do we want the healthy ones too? And it's like a scale. It's a balancing act. If we choose health every day, for those of you that know me, you know, I'm all about the small, simple changes. I believe it's the small, simple changes that lead to the big results in our lives so that you, you, Y-O-U can feel good again. I believe that to the depths of my core. That's how I made it out of recovery alive. That's how I uh, was able to fully recover from a life strangling eating disorder and depression and anxiety and alcohol and drugs and all sorts of stuff I was using um, as a fix not to feel um, and not to allow myself to be healthy. I didn't believe that I deserved that. And I was making myself sick. I shouldn't be here right now. And I think for many of us, we're, we're in that same boat. And I was waiting for someone else to fix me. I was waiting for someone else to tell me what to do. And this is where yoga for me came in because 
yoga became a catalyst for me to take my health back, to take my life back uh, and to realize that I could, I could do the things necessary in my life to be the healthiest version of myself. Did it happen overnight? No. Did it happen in six months? No. Did it happen in a year? No. Um, it was a, an evolving over time. It was a slow trickle effect. Uh, I danced on the borderline of, of recovery for, for a long time, kind of in and out, in and out, in and out. But that really taught me that health and change is an evolving over time, just like our cells, our cells are evolving over time. And if all you do today is when you walk into the truck stop and you're like, I'm thirsty. And instead of picking up a pop or a soda, as we call it here in Southeastern Wisconsin, you pick up a water and you drink that water, that counts, my friend, that counts. And I don't want you even for a second to think that one healthy choice doesn't make a difference. Whoever told you that is lying to you because it's that one healthy choice that leads to the next and leads to the next and leads to the next. And I would rather have you walk into the truck stop every day and pick up a water than pick up a soda. And if you do that for 365 days, that's a whole year. That's 365% better than what you were the year before. And every single time you drink that water, we learned from Karen today that we're feeding ourselves. We're feeding ourselves on a cellular level, what we desperately need to be healthy. We're making our body more alkaline internally and externally are not too different. You guys internally, our body, if it's, if it's surrounded by toxic garbage and chemicals and, and processed foods, and, you know, it's kind of stagnant. It's, it's like, uh, when you drive down, um, or the road and you see a pond that doesn't have any moving water and it has that like nasty LG, like grossness on the top of it, like internally, that's what's happening to your body our body becomes stiff and rigid. Um, we call it the fuzz and our fascia, like it just gets all stiff. And that environment breeds, breeds those unhealthy cells to multiply. And so you got to drink that water, my friend. I don't care if it's one bottle. Stop telling yourself that it's not good enough and it doesn't count because it does. When, when drivers start working with me um, in our mother trucker yoga programs, so much of what we do is just these small foundational things, because I believe that that's how you make everlasting change. That's how you make lifestyle changes for the long run is through small things. And Karen was talking about today that stress equals disease. It's not di disease, it's dis-ease, dis-ease. And so what's stressing you out in your life? You might not be able to eliminate all the stress in your life. And actually uh, there is studies that say that you know, stress in your life is actually really good. It's how you build muscle. Like you need to stress your muscles to build them. Right. Um, and you do need some stress to progress and further yourself forward. Um, and that for another day, but what stress can you eliminate from your life right now? Just one thing, pick one, pick one thing. I have recognized that my life is getting busier and I, I need to have a designated time every day where I exercise or work out. Like I move actively through the day, but if I don't do that, walk, go to the gym, lift weights, practice yoga, stretch, whatever it is. Um, those addictive tendencies for me start creeping back up. I get anxiety. I, I start making bad choices and, uh, I have to designate time every single day in order to stay healthy in order for my healthy cells to multiply. So I recognized here, it's going to be summer soon. My kids are going to be off school. I have to get up earlier. So today I didn't want to do it. Um, I got up at uh, 5 15 AM. I'm not a morning person. I used to be, but now I'm making myself a morning person. It's a choice because we choose what to put in our bodies. We choose how to move our bodies every single day. You guys, it is a choice. Stop giving those choices away to somebody else. Nobody's in charge of you, but you, you are a full grown adult. And so what stress do you need to eliminate in your lives? How can I make my body more alkaline? Drink water, eat real food. I know you might not have a lot of options out there, but we talk about a lot of this um, over on my blog is, you know, there are things that you can do, even if you're eating fast food on a, on a regular basis, ask the 
the lady or the, the guy at the fast food place to make your food a particular way. They will accommodate. They absolutely will. I do this all the time. You guys, I, I have some diet restrictions and to that some dietary needs. Um, and I do this all the time. I've been doing this for years. You show up at the restaurant, at the fast food joint, and you say, I want a grilled chicken with no bun, no condiments, please. I'd like you to take any vegetables you have in the back and make me a side salad, please. Lettuce, tomatoes are pretty typical. Um, onions, peppers, that's usually what you get. Sometimes they have other stuff. Can you make me a big old side salad? And, you know, then maybe you want some French fries, but eat half of them. Okay. Like I'm, I'm a realist here. I believe that, you know, moderation is the key to happiness here. So alkaline food, you're eating real food. Every time you walk into the truck stop, pick up a dang apple. Hello, apple a day does keep the doctor away um, or an orange or whatever it is. Those things all count. Yeah, it might be a drop in the bucket, but at least you're dropping in the right bucket and move, move your body. Stop blaming the fact that you are a driver on the fact that you can't move. I'm not even going to use the word exercise. I'm just going to say the word move because there is a lot of time during the day that you can move. Yes, even from the driver's seat. Yes, even while you're driving. This is the whole premise of what I do with drivers, you guys. I've been doing this for years. And so you can move your body. And then finally, what Karen said, which I think was very relevant and very timely, and that is to allow and forgive. Allow and forgive. What do I need to allow in my life? And who do I need to forgive? Now, if you're someone like me, one of the most important people I needed to forgive was myself. <laughs> self, get it? Karen was talking about the self. I needed to forgive myself. I was not allowing myself the opportunity to get well because I didn't think I deserved it. I didn't think that I deserved to be healthy. I didn't think I deserved to be a healthy person. And so I was keeping myself sick because that's all I knew. It was comfortable and familiar. There's a, a story and I tell this a lot. It's about a cat. And so there's this person out in his backyard and his cat is meowing. And the neighbor looks over the fence and says, hey, why is your cat meowing? And the owner says, oh, he's laying on a nail. And the neighbor says, well, why doesn't he get off of it? And the owner says, well, it doesn't hurt that much. For many of us, that is how we look at our health. It doesn't hurt that much. We like to meow about it. We like to make sure people hear us. People know that, hey, I have this challenge. I have this. I'm, I'm this. But we don't want to make the change for whatever reason. And I feel like I get to say this because this was me for years. You don't know what my life is like. You don't know what my challenges are. I'm a special unicorn. And I kept myself sick for a really long time because it was familiar. It was like the cat on the nail. I could complain about it just enough. And I was just kind of like barely getting by. But eventually I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, I can't have a family and have kids living life this way. I won't make it into my 20s, late 20s and 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s living this way. I can't keep doing this to myself. And at that time I was practicing yoga and yoga was such an insight for me because the mind, the body, the spirit are all connected. I know we focus on the body a lot on the show, but they're all connected. And one of the things I recognized was that I have to believe that I'm worth it. I have to respect my body and myself first if I want other people to respect me. I am the only one that is going to get myself up in the morning because I am a full grown adult. I am the only one that's going to make myself exercise. That's going to make myself eat a salad instead of eat a greasy double cheeseburger with onion rings. Like I'm the only one putting food in my mouth. I'm the only one deciding to sit on the couch or go for a walk outside. Like I'm making those choices consciously every single day, sometimes unconsciously, but I'm still making them. Right. And so what 
decisions are you making on a daily basis to feed those 70 trillion cells? What are you doing on a surface level that internally your body is going, I guess we're going to keep multiplying these unhealthy cells, or are you making choices and decisions for yourself that your body gets to say on a deep level, on a cellular level, Ooh, now we get to multiply our healthy cells. Yay. You're making those decisions every single day. This is about empowering yourself to realize you have more control over your health than you think. A driver just called me yesterday. Um, and, uh, he said, Hey, uh, Craig gave me your phone number, Craig, if you're listening and, uh, I need help. And I was like, Hey, and usually when I see a, a number, I don't know, I'm like, Oh, it's tel telemarketer. So I haven't learned. I, I can't always answer the phone sounding grumpy. <laughs> and, uh, we talked for a while and, and he said that, you know, he's, he's over 400 pounds now. And he's had enough and some of his levels are good and some of them aren't, and he can't live like this anymore. He no longer wants to sit on the nail and just talk about how he's sitting on the nail. He wants to get off and he wants help. He recognizes that he knows that he's in control of what he puts in his mouth and how he moves his body, but he needs help. He needs support. He needs accountability. In all of our lives, I believe we come to a place where we need something more. We need support. We need a community. We need, we need resources and strategies and tools because what we're doing isn't enough. And I'm here to tell you that there are people out there that want to help you. There are programs out there to help you. One of the best decisions I ever made in my life was um, going to outpatient treatment. Because I couldn't do it on my own, I realized. I was making a lot of good choices, but those core cellular level choices were, were still not changing. And so if you're at a place today where you are like, I'm just going to start drinking that one bottle of water every day that I walk into the truck stop hope, I'm here to cheer you on and support you and say that is one small change in the right direction that one will help you mentally because you see yourself making a good choice, but two, on a cellular level, you're feeding your cells, you're feeding your body. Healthy cells are multiplying every single time you drink that bottle of water. And I want to say good for you. If you're like my new driver friend that called me yesterday and you realize that you need more, there are people out there to help you. Hey, I'm right here. Reach out to them. Be all in. Like enough is enough. Because without your health, what do you have? Without your health, what quality of life are you really living? And without your health, what type of a future is waiting for you? Join me, join other drivers, and let's get you the health that you deserve. I believe it's the small, simple changes that lead to the big results in life. What are the small changes you are going to make today? What are the small changes you are going to implement into your life because you're worth it? And what are the small changes you're going to take with and say, enough is enough. I deserve more. I deserve more. As an adult, no one can make you do anything. But as an adult, you have the keys to your future and your health where you can change everything. Now the real work begins. Now the decision comes. What are you going to choose to do? I think it's time, my friend, to get off the nail and make a change today. I want to thank you guys so much for listening to the Driver Life podcast here. My name is Hope Savara. Thanks for tuning in to TNC Radio. Thanks for tuning in and deciding that your health is important. Remember, it's the small, simple changes that lead to the big results in your life so that you can feel good again. Until next time, I'll see you soon.